Well, since when is a life worth just three demerit points? That was the penalty Graham John Stronick copped for killing Daniel Swan. Stronick admitted the head-on crash was his fault. Daniel's mum is furious he walked free. It's Mother's Day and Cheryl Swan's son Daniel has taken his mum out to lunch. Little did I know that as we took this photo that two hours later, almost to the minute, some idiot would be on the wrong side of the road and slam into him and kill him. No parent, no parent should ever have to bury their child. None. The young driver was doing absolutely nothing wrong in the lead up to the crash, but the other motorist was. He'd been driving on the incorrect side of the road before the fatal head-on collision. Because he would have seen the face of that person that was about to kill him. There's no two ways about it. Cheryl's lost her son. That's fine. The killer driver, Graham Stronick, survived and despite being in the wrong, he avoided serious penalty. Should you be driving? Uh, who are you? My name's Reid Butler, I'm from Channel 9. Graham? The 60-year-old Launceston man was only charged with failing to keep left of the dividing line. She believes you've got off far too easily here, Graham. It's a minor traffic offence, which cost him just three demerit points and a fine. Do you think that's fair? Honestly? Um... When is the law of affair? To put the sentence into context, in Victoria, a driver will lose four demerit points if they're caught holding their phone in the car, even if the vehicle is stationary. In New South Wales, they'd lose five. But in the eyes of the law, it's as if Daniel wasn't even there that day, as if his death never happened. It didn't matter. It's hard to get your head around and imagine how it must feel for Daniel's mum. In the 10 months since her son's death, Cheryl believes Stronic has shown no remorse and says he's also made a joke of the situation. Go back. Uh, please don't, please uh, don't touch the camera. Here, he pokes his tongue out at photographers as he arrives at court for his sentence. To me, that shows his attitude to what's happened. That shows his attitude to human life. Do you want to stick your tongue out? Do you want to go to jail for being a nice little son? Cheryl lost her son and you lost three demerit points and we don't think that's good enough. Well, that's fine. You might not be a big fat. It's your opinion. This is what the driver would have been seeing as he drove along here. Nice clear road. Cheryl regularly visits the crash site and has spent hours just sitting and watching other cars drive over the crest. She says she hasn't seen one vehicle in this spot ever drive on the wrong side of the road. Daniel had just purchased his first property with his girlfriend and the couple was trying to have a child of their own together. I would still give anything to try places with him. If someone had to be have someone run into them that day, why not me? He tried to steer away. You didn't change your speed at all. Stronic avoided prison thanks to a quirk in Tasmania's justice system. Read your law. Which is allowing killers to walk away with minimal punishment for their actions. So I know that you're extremely Sorry. lucky that you so have, have you, escaped have you, without have penalty. In Victoria, I would be very surprised if this case had not been prosecuted for a jury trial alleging dangerous driving causing death and there may have well been jail. That's the difference in the law. Former Victorian Chief Magistrate Nick Pappas QC is among the country's most senior barristers. For me, it appears to be an obvious enough case that would have justified prosecution. I mean, we don't know whether he would have been convicted, but this is the sort of case where a jury would have decided whether this person should or should not have been convicted. The reality is, if Daniel had died in the same circumstances on a road on the mainland, the other driver would have likely faced serious criminal charges. 
The distracted bus driver who caused this crash in Melbourne, which injured six people and didn't kill anyone, was recently sentenced to more than five years in jail. So in Tasmania, the law seems to be somewhat out of step with other jurisdictions. Across the Bass Strait, Cheryl feels the legal system has ignored the fact her son even died. Why did you drive onto the wrong side of the road? You forgot. I have no memory of it. Absolutely no memory of it. And that's why Tasmania's Director of Public Prosecutions, Daryl Coates, decided to charge Stronic with a simple traffic offence, even though he caused Daniel's death. The DPP says Stronic could have been distracted, suffered a coughing fit or even fallen asleep, and that would have been a perfectly reasonable excuse for losing control of his vehicle and killing Daniel. The law should be fair and just. It should be fair and just, and it has to be assessed in the way the law is written and the people have to interpret it accordingly. The DPP's decision may sound outrageous, but it's based on previous legal rulings and Tasmania has a shocking record of letting killer drivers off the hook. There is no closure. You, know, you, have, you have your world taken from you. There's no goodbyes. Janet McMullen's late husband Tony was killed in 2004 in Tasmania's northeast. A court initially found the other driver, Yvonne Langen, veered across several lanes and slammed into Tony's vehicle after losing concentration or falling asleep. It was like I lost half myself. But despite dodging a jail sentence over the negligent driving conviction, Langen appealed and astoundingly was cleared of any wrongdoing. She had no case to answer. She may have had a coughing fit or she may have sneezed. And therefore, the first ruling was flawed. She could have just run home for a kangaroo because that's... That's the way I look at it. He meant nothing to her, nothing, and he was everything to us. The case is a big reason why Daniel Swan's killer wasn't hit with criminal charges. The precedent suggests Stronic could have successfully argued the same defence as Yvonne Langen. Our case has been held up as a banner to let people walk. It hurts, you know, it's not fair. Society expects that the matters be dealt with seriously and properly. In the end, the Tasmanian government and the uh, politicians, the people, need to review how the law's operating. Cheryl says Stronic has been playing the victim in the tragic situation. If you're wondering why I'm holding my arm, it's because it's broken. The grieving mum is just desperate for the law to change. There has to be improvements to the system which will help someone else down the track not have to go through this because this is shit and it's not right mr coates and tasmania's attorney general elise archer both declined an interview but ms archer did provide a statement which you will find on our website